Well, here at Innovative Laser and Design, customers come to the shop, and of course they want to see what we're doing. They're interested in what we're doing, and we're we're glad to show them. The problem we have to have when we bring them out in our shop is we got to look out for them. It's neat to see a laser and just say the word laser. Everybody wants to come look at the laser, and they're going to go home and tell their friends about that. But when we walk them out in the shop, we got to be looking out for them. When we're out there, we wear steel-toe boots, we wear long pants, uh, safety glasses, and when we come out in here. We also keep our alloys clean, and this is a housekeeping thing, this isn't a laser thing, this is housekeeping, it's another safety. We'll keep our alloys clean and swept and spaces and hoses and cables off the floor because they're used to being in homes or offices or businesses, and they're not used to walking out in an industrial shop. So a lot of times when you have customers in your shop, you got to look out for them. So we'll step through and start with that. Laser cutters are going to use either air compressed air or liquid nitrogen or liquid oxygen. The gas is in the liquid form, it's over 400 to negative 400 degrees. The temperature will build pressure. And sometimes you can hear hiss through the relief valve here. That might be unnerving to a customer. Sometimes these will lift off. Like an example here, you can see this tank is starting to frost right around here. It's at 350 pounds, so his relief, you can see some condensation built up right here. Just before these release, it will blow gas, and it will look something like this. Right? It's really unnerving to people <laughs> if they're not ready for it. So, just out of a niceness, if you hear or you think that thing's going to lift, don't let it be standing right next to it. When we come up to a laser, the first thing everybody wants to do is they want to get right up here and look. Well, the safety mat is going to shut that down. The safety mat is never one of the most vital things on this machine to save the protection of just people and mechanical If I step on this mat, it stops this whole machine right now. We have two ways to stop this machine right here. I can e-stop here, or I can quick stop with a feed hole here, or at the end of the machine, if I'm standing at the end, there's a feed hole at the end, too. That'll interrupt any motion of the machine. Emergency stop is different. This will, this will stop everything drive, high voltage, everything will trip off. If there was some sort of accident and you don't know what's going on, like for an operator and he's new and he doesn't know what's going on, I tell him just throw the disconnect. Disconnect right here. If I throw this knife switch here, this laser, the chiller, and all its support equipment are gone. If you got to spend time thinking about it, throw the disconnect. Another thing that's important to watch when you're in a shop, we keep our strap here just because it's convenient and it's quick. But if we left that out like that, that's really easy for somebody that's walking around and all interested in everything. They're not looking down here. They walk into this and decide to stab themselves and cut their hands. That's something we definitely try to keep our eyes clear, cables off the ground, because we're not looking at that. We're looking at the press break to make noise, the laser that makes noise. Another thing that's a good thing to do is you don't stand right here and lean on the laser. It's, it's pretty casual, but even to rest your hand on the grids to support the metal, it just hurts to rest your hands on it. So a lot of this stuff, people aren't going to do that anyway. But you don't want to see people popping up onto the bed of the laser. Uh, there's one guy that did many years ago who fell on the back of that kind of sad, but he said he got 60 stitches and pairs of two from his ear to his rear, which, which I thought was funny to say, but man, that had to hurt because I can't even rest my hands on that. This is another thing that'll make people jump. The only question out of here is the ball transfers lift up. If somebody had their back turned and wasn't ready, or it's the first time, it's something that can kind of scare us. In almost every shop I go to, keeping track of scrap is just really a pain and it's hard and it's really easy for it to get ahead of them. We use big chains like this to keep our straps latched in place and can't go anywhere. Then we have stuff like this where you don't want to throw a piece of steel away, but look at this. This is kind of dangerous. Above our head, we'll let it go, but down here we cut them off. We try to keep stuff like this away so people can't get hurt. We have class D fire we have CO2 fire extinguishers. When you have the sensitive electronics and delicate equipment that you have, you spray that with a powder extinguisher, you just added thousands of dollars to your repair. Powder extinguishers go in, they interact with the 
humidity in the air, they corrode components, they corrode metal, they melt everything. It's just a total disaster. The CO2 extinguisher blows the oxygen out of there, the fire's out, and it, the evaporation is gone. CO2 fire extinguishers cost a lot more than powders, but if you use a powder extinguisher, you could have bought several CO2s for the amount of damage you were going to spend in trying to make repairs off that cheap powder extinguisher. CO2 is definitely what you want to use for an electrical fire. The Class D extinguisher, we only have that for some of the special metals like the titanium and uh, alloys that it can actually burn. Once they start to burn, you can't put them out. And so that's what the Class D is for. So on the opposite side of the laser, there's a safety mat that if you stand on that, it stops all motion, but you don't have anything like that back here. We use chains, the OEM has um, like the safety cords that you can stretch out, it does the same thing. But this keeps you from getting tangled up on the back side of the machine. The only people that are normally back here are going to be people like me to do maintenance. Uh, we'll be back here doing the beam alignment and working on all of this. And while we're back here, you'll notice all these stickers, all these yellow stickers. The laser beam is generated in this cabinet, bounces off a series of mirrors that are shaping and turning the beam anti-reflective and sending it down to the cutting head. Every one of these stickers is telling us that if I take that off, there's a laser beam. It could be a laser beam behind there. And it's, just general, it's just a general warning. If you're doing maintenance, of course, you know that the beam's not shooting right out when you take it out. You, know how to, you should know how to do your maintenance. We're just using, we take these off, we inspect the mirrors to line the beam up centered on the, or with targets on the, on the mirror mounts, and then move on. But this is just a warning that's required that if you take this off and you turn the laser on, the beam's going to come out. And you're not going to see it, it's in the infrared, so you won't know. So it could be your real, it'll start a fire somewhere when it eventually hits. Part of the deal with the chains is what they're doing is they're providing me. Mechanical protection, not getting tangled up in the bellows, the guys back here. There's a rail, a rail system right through there that you can see. It's rolling back and forth. And this whole gantry is sliding on this rail back and forth while it's moving around and cutting. Service panels and airs and stuff like that. You do have to get to those for maintenance. But you leave these up because if you're coming through here, you know what you're doing in here. You can't accidentally just, oh, I didn't know I got in here and got hurt. This chain's up, this should be a warning if you don't enter. 